This is the full video of my lecture for the Substance Use Disorder Counseling and Chemical Dependency classes. In this chapter, we examine tobacco, nicotine, smoking, and the problems that it causes. We also discuss secondhand and thirdhand smoke, as well as treatment for smoking cessation. The video also briefly discusses the new development of vaping. This video is by David Joel Miller. Some of the material originally appeared on counselorsoapbox.com, my blog. Photos are courtesy of pixabay.com or Wikimedia Commons and licensed under the Creative Commons free for commercial use, no attribution required license. Is nicotine a stimulant or a depressant? This is a commonly asked question. Generally, nicotine is classified as a stimulant. At low doses, it works as a stimulant. Nicotine is highly poisonous. At high doses, it acts like a depressant as it depresses the body and may lead to death. This dual effect is called biphasic. There are many types of tobacco and they all contain nicotine. Tobacco can be smoked in cigars, cigarettes, pipe tobacco. Smokeless tobacco can be purchased as snuff or chewing tobacco. All are the results of differences in cultivation and processing. Only two of the 60 nicotinia species can be used for smoking. Pure nicotine is a toxic substance. Nicotine is as toxic as cyanide. 60 milligrams will kill a human. However, the smoker doesn't get that dosage as much of the nicotine and the potency is destroyed by burning. Snuff is powdered tobacco. The tobacco is mixed with salt, moisture, oils, flavorings, and additives, and then snorted. There are some social and societal problems with smoking. Smokers are far more likely to be unemployed, 18 percentage points more. If the current unemployment rate in your area is 10 percent, smokers will experience a 28 percent unemployment rate. Two pack per day smokers are four times more likely to be homeless at some point in their lives. When you start to smoke has an impact on its effects. The younger you are when you start, the harder it is to stop. A middle school child who smokes more than one cigarette has an 85% chance of being a lifelong smoker. The pharmacology of smoking. Nicotine is an acetylcholine agonist, meaning it mimics the effects of acetylcholine and this is at low levels in the bloodstream. At high doses, nicotine retards acetylcholine transmission and begins to function as an antagonist. This dual action is called biphasic. Nicotine also raises dopamine levels in parts of the brain, resulting in the feeling of pleasure. Removing nicotine from the body. Nicotine is largely metabolized in the liver. Lungs and kidneys also play a role in breaking down nicotine. Nicotine is eliminated largely in the urine and affects the kidneys. Smokers need to smoke many times per day to maintain blood levels of nicotine. Nicotine tolerance, dependence, and cravings. Tolerance develops quickly. Smokers become physically dependent on nicotine. The half-life is about two hours, meaning half of the nicotine is out of the system during that time. The result of this rapid metabolism are cravings. Withdrawals result in irritability, anger, moodiness, depression, and interpersonal conflicts. Nicotine's metabolic effects include a decreasing of in appetite for sweet foods. 
increases the amount of energy that the body uses while resting. It increases the amount of energy that the body uses while exercising. A pack a day smoker receives many doses of nicotine. If we assume an average of 150 per day, that amounts to 55,000 doses of nicotine per year. I know of no other drug which someone could consume that many doses in a year. The problems caused by tobacco are not just all about nicotine. Tobacco also contains tar, which is a major cancer causer. Smoking the cigarette produces carbon monoxide, which interferes with oxygen transport. Low tar and nicotine cigarettes are not any healthier. Measurements to determine these cigarettes are low in tar and nicotine are done on smoking machines. And the cigarettes have small holes punctured around the outside of the filter area. The machines smoke at a uniform rate. Humans, when they get more fresh air and less nicotine in the puff, just puff harder and therefore compensate. The result is they get the same dose of nicotine and tar, maybe more, and they consume more cigarettes in order to get it. A great many diseases have been linked to cigarette smoking. Coronary heart disease, smokers have twice the rate of non-smokers. Chronic obstructive lung disease and emphysema, cancers of the larynx, oral cavity, esophagus, bladder, pancreas, and kidneys have all been attributed to linked to cigarette smoking. This in addition to the well-known problem with lung cancer. There are additional risks to smoking for pregnant women. One risk is spontaneous abortions, which result in the loss of the fetus, but also can result in severe bleeding for the pregnant woman. Smoking also results in preterm births, low birth weight babies, fetal deaths, infant deaths, particularly SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, and nicotine is readily transmitted in the mother's milk. Two types of passive smoking have been identified. Most people are familiar with secondhand smoke. If you're around it, you breathe it in. You get doses of nicotine, tars, and carbon monoxide, whether you light up or not. But third-hand smoke is a new development, something we've recently recognized. When a smoker lives in an area and smokes, even when the area is cleaned and sterilized, tars and the nicotine may stay on surfaces, uh, the carpet, the uh, ventilation hood on the stove, the air conditioning and heating ducts and so on. Those tars and nicotine can be relaunched into the air and re-enter the, the breathing uh, air. Babies crawling on the carpet where a smoker used to live is then exposed to that person smoking, even though that person no longer lives in the apartment. The good news is that it's never too late for a smoker to stop. Quitting by age 40 reduces the risk by up to 90%. The day you stop smoking, you stop doing further damage. Taking a, it takes about as long as you smoked for the risk to reduce. Co-occurring smoking. More than half of all the cigarettes smoked are consumed by those with a DSM diagnosis. The high rates of smoking occur by those with depression, anxiety, bulimia, ADHD, and while not all books recognize that those people with psychosis, particularly schizophrenia, are likely to also be heavy smokers. Smoking cessation. Nicotine is treated differently than other drugs. Half of all living adults who smoked have now quit. Most smokers quit on their own without formal treatment. Most relapse in six months to a year, and most try to quit seven to 15 times before they are successful. 
with treatment, people are four times more likely to quit and stay quit. What makes smoking cessation treatment work? Well, controlling nicotine withdrawal symptoms is important. Breaking the motor behavior habits. Teaching coping skills for thoughts, feelings, and situations that trigger smoking urges is also helpful. The two primary types of treatment are behavioral and nicotine replacement. Notice that most substance use disorder programs do not focus on treating smoking. One reason is because many of the counselors working in these programs are themselves in recovery and commonly smoke. But nicotine or tobacco is usually not the focus of drug treatment because it doesn't respond well to talk therapy, but instead needs behavioral or nicotine replacement therapy. Nicotine replacement therapy may involve gum, which contains nicotine, the patch, nasal spray, inhalers, or lozenges. Replacement doubles the number who succeed at quitting. Nicotine replacement therapy and behavioral methods together are better than either separately. Medication can help and two meds are currently approved, bupropion and varincycline. Smoking prevention is an important part of this treatment of smoking. If you can keep people from smoking in the beginning, you don't have to worry about helping them quit. One way of preventing smoking is changing the environment. More and more places are you can't smoke here. Uh, hospitals now it may be illegal to smoke even on the grounds, even way out on the sidewalk. Uh, many places have now rules that you have to be a certain distance in our town, 30 feet from a main entrance to a building in order to smoke. There are many other prevention methods. You can increase the prices and taxes are one way that the prices of nicotine, cigarettes and other forms have been increased. And you have laws that regulate where someone can smoke and who can smoke. What about vaping? The evidence on vaping still is out, but increasingly we're starting to question whether vaping is actually a good thing or just another way of administering nicotine into the body. Uh, is it a harm reduction or simply a new problem? Vaping and e-cigarettes. Here in California, effective June 2016, vaping is regulated the same way as smoking cigarettes, regardless of whether the liquid contains nicotine. People cannot vape anywhere where you cannot smoke. You must be 21 to purchase. You cannot give vaping materials to anyone under 21. However, the law does not make it illegal for someone under 21 to possess a vaping pen. The textbook I've been using describes two types of vaporizers or vaping uh, material. I believe I've seen articles suggesting there is a third version now. Generation one was what we called e-cigarettes. They had a small battery, they had cartridges, and children have died from swallowing those cartridges and getting a fatal dose of nicotine. Generation two had the lithium ion batteries, which can overheat and explode. They are adjustable in temperature. One problem is that people who use these in order to get more nicotine into their system keep turning up the temperature on their unit until it gets to the maximum. Too high a temperature results in the liquid that's solvent that's in the uh, cartridges vaporizing and it may produce formaldehyde when the liquid is heated. The refillable tank is another problem. What is in them can be inconsistent. Vaping is on the rise, although this has fluctuated up and down and remains to be seen where it will finally end. But as of uh, the textbook time, there had been a 900% increase in vaping. Vaping is now more popular 
than smoking among middle school and high school kids. It can be purchased online for as little as three to five dollars. Those who vape only in 11th or 12th grade are 400% more likely to start smoking cigarettes after they leave school. So rather than being a preventative, it would appear that vaping is an easy pathway into long-term smoking. Quitting an e-cigarettes. One suggestion has been that using e-cigarettes or vaping would help people to stop. Every year, 50% of smokers try to quit. Only 7% of those who try do quit. E-cigarettes are less satisfying. Those who do both are more likely to give up the e-cigarettes and return to the regular cigarettes. So if someone is trying to quit smoking and using vaping as an alternative, they have to not smoke cigarettes at all. 77% who vape and smoke quit vaping and return to full-time use of cigarettes. Vaping with other drugs is increasingly common. Find a new route of administration and it's likely someone will find a way to use it for a different drug. Plenty of people are using marijuana or the THC active ingredient in marijuana in vaping units. Methamphetamine and bath salts are also being consumed that way. So it's very important for those working in drug treatment not to assume that because someone is vaping that they are using a, a, a herbal remedy or that they are simply trying to quit smoking. It may be a sneaky way of continuing to use their drug of choice. There are both potential health benefits and harms from vaping. The benefits are smoking fewer cigarettes, helping to quit smoking tobacco, and less carcinogens than uh, from the tar and the ash. The harms are children swallowing liquids or cartridges. Vaping makes asthma, breathing problems worse. It increases the heart rate when withdrawing, and it has the same problems of secondhand smoke as smoking cigarettes. Other issues with vaping. Pregnant women should not vape. Whatever drug the woman does, the fetus will receive a higher dose for a longer period of time. The mother gets it into her bloodstream. The blood crosses the placenta to the fetus. The fetus's liver and kidney are underdeveloped and can't detoxify the drug readily. Then it has to cross back in the blood and the placenta until the mother's liver can detoxify it. Any drug in a mother's pregnant woman's bloodstream results in a higher dosage in the fetus for a longer period of time. So there's also no health benefit if you both smoke and vape. E-cigarette use seems to increase alcohol consumption, which is also a significant problem. It may help you reduce cravings for nicotine if you live with a smoker, and that has probably been one of the major benefits when a woman is, or a man is trying not to smoke, but their partner in the house still smokes using a vaporizer, vaping pen uh, that does not contain nicotine could benefit in that situation. Terminology from this chapter seven, nicotine, were any of these words new to you? Nicotine poisoning, not only the words, but the concept, emphysema, and vaping. All of these might be part of the question asked you, and if you don't know the vocabulary, you'll have trouble doing well on the tests and quizzes. What should you have learned from this video, the chapter in the text or the PowerPoint about nicotine at low doses? nicotine and tobacco acts as a stimulant. At high doses, it acts as a depressant. This dual action is called biphasic. Pure nicotine is highly poisonous. Tolerance develops rapidly, and third-hand smoke is dangerous, just as is smoking or second-hand smoke. Treatment for smoking or nicotine withdrawal is 
medically done, replacement therapy, or in counseling, it is done by behavioral modification. Talk therapy uh, that is used for alcohol and other drugs does not seem to be particularly helpful in getting people to stop smoking. Although I have seen some evidence that uh, psychoeducation, teaching people about nicotine and smoking or not smoking can be helpful. 